How to do intermittent fasting for health. There's always a good way to do something and a not so good way to do something. I'm going to tell you what you need to know. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg with Wellness for Life. And if you'd like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So there's this huge trend. It's a movement of uh, intermittent fasting, low carb, ketogenesis, and so forth. So a lot of people are jumping on the bandwagon and for every video out there with good information, there's 10 videos with just opinions and people tried something and it said, oh, it works for me, therefore it must be healthy. So we're gonna talk about the healthy way to do this. We have so many people who are obese and we know that that's not very healthy. So we just assume that the weight is the cause of the unhealthiness. And therefore, if you lose weight, you will get healthier. And it doesn't work like that. It's not that simple. There's lots and lots of ways to lose weight in a very unhealthy way. There are lots and lots of skinny people who are very, very unhealthy. Uh, skinny people get diabetes, skinny people get high blood pressure, skinny people get cancer. So we can't just jump to that conclusion. What we want to understand is that the weight is not the cause, it's the result of an unhealthy lifestyle, right? Those opposed to intermittent fasting, they typically say things like, oh, well, Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You have to get started with a good bowl of cereal to get your blood sugar up. Uh, they say that you should eat small but frequent meals to make sure that your blood sugar stays up. That if, you're, if you don't eat often enough, your blood sugar is going to drop. Well, all of these things are only true if you have taught your body to rely on carbohydrates. If you've taught your body to rely on frequent meals and on high carbohydrate so that you create a blood sugar roller coaster because then every time it goes up, it must come down. Every time it goes down, you gotta fill it back up. So it's, this, it's the quick swings that are creating the problems. And then of course, it seems like a good idea to top off the blood sugar frequently. We have the same physiology. We share the physiology with our, our ancestors our DNA is the same, they never had these things. So whatever our ancestors developed and adapted to, that's what's still normal for us. And they never had six meals a day or three meals a day. They had food when they found it. They never had breakfast unless there might be some leftovers occasionally. And their blood sugar was level because they didn't have any carbohydrates or not a significant amount of carbohydrates. They had no grains. They had no uh, abundance of processed things and starchy things. The proponents of the intermittent fasting, they say, oh, this is the best thing since sliced bread. It's amazing. I've tried everything to lose weight and now the weight's coming off. Uh, I can eat anything I want. And there's so many channels out there with videos where they tell you, oh, look, I'm eating anything I want, I'm eating garbage, I'm eating, uh, you don't have to give up the foods you love. And look, the weight's coming off. Well, that is not proof of health. And a lot of these people doing it are in their 20s and 30s, so they haven't had a chance to break down their bodies yet. They haven't had a chance to degenerate to where this becomes a problem. And they're saying that this is a way for fast weight loss. Well, I'd like you to get over the idea once and for all that there is a fast way to do something. It's like trying to grow an oak quickly. It's like yelling at the grass or pulling on the grass to make it grow faster. Nature has a certain pace. And if it took you a certain amount of time to degenerate or create a certain problem or create a certain toxicity or deficiency, it's going to take a while to turn it around. The body has to rebuild. The body has to regenerate and do it the right way. So please get over the idea of a quick fix. If you'd like long lasting 
results, you have to create a long-lasting solution. There is no fad or trend or diet that you can jump on and get off and get a lasting results. Not possible. So both the opposed and the proponents, they have a certain point, but they're not looking at health and they're missing the big picture of what is our physiology designed to do. So the opposed people, they're, they're missing what our physiology is designed for and the proponents, they are missing what health is and how the world has changed, how our food has changed more in the last 50 years than it has in the previous 50,000. When we talk about health, you have to look at what health is. Health is not the absence of symptoms. Health is when every cell, when every organ is functioning optimally, when it has the resources to do the job it's supposed to do, to think, to focus, to produce energy, to digest food, to move, to not have pain, to regulate blood pressure and hormones, and to send signals and to maintain and, and keep up with everything and make sure that the next generation of cells, next generation of organs, because they constantly wear out and are, re are being rebuilt, that the next generation is as healthy and has the same work capacity as the previous. That's what health is when we have a good health reserve and we maintain it. That has very little to do with symptoms because symptoms happen many, many years after we have started on that slippery slope, after we've started to burn our candle in, in both ends, so to speak. So cells produce all the work. They perform all the work in the body and they are interfered with by toxins so if you think you can eat anything and you're eating a bunch of pesticides and you're eating preservatives and you're eating sugar that is a huge stress because it unbalances your entire hormone system then you're missing the point nutrients those are what the body needs to maintain to rebuild those cells processed foods don't have nutrients the nutrients such as fiber and minerals and vitamin complexes, the way they occur in nature, not in a synthetic little pill, essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, all of those things occur in whole real food from nature, but they are being destroyed and depleted and nuked out of existence when we eat processed foods. So sure you can lose weight doing this, but you cannot maintain health unless you do it the right way. So absolutely, intermittent fasting is healthy. It's one of the best things that you can do to reverse insulin resistance. When you, every time that you eat, if you eat small frequent meals, every time that you eat, you have an insulin response and you're building up your insulin resistance. You're telling your body with every meal, time to store some things, time to store something, because that's what insulin is. It's a storage hormone. So one of the primary benefits of intermittent fasting is that you help with insulin resistance. And that is the most important factor in obesity and weight gain. But it is not the only factor in health. It is a huge factor in health but it's not the only factor because we also have toxicity and deficiency. Insulin resistance wreaks havoc with your physiology on so many levels and the proponents, when they find out that they can eat anything, that they can do these things and the weight comes off, they are addressing insulin resistance, but that is not the same thing as health. So what I would encourage you to do is to start skipping breakfast or even before that actually start reducing carbs so that you don't have this crazy blood sugar roller coaster and then once you're on a lower carb diet now you're going to have less violent swings of blood sugar now you're not going to suffer much if you skip a meal here and there and what i would suggest is start skipping breakfast 
and then you take your coffee or your tea or whatever beverage you like in the morning and you add a little bit of fat to it. So I put, I have coffee in the morning, I put uh, coconut cream, I put a little bit of butter and I put some MCT oil, some medium chain triglyceride oil. It's, it's an oil made from coconut basically, but it has certain uh, lengths of uh, fatty acids that are especially beneficial to support you. So if you do that, you will probably find that you don't miss breakfast at all. And the longer you go, the more your body gets used to that, the easier it gets to not just look for the next meal, not to have that craving for the next meal. So oftentimes I'll have my coffee in the morning and then sometimes I'll have lunch at one or two and sometimes I don't. I'll just go straight through to dinner, five or six o'clock, I'll have a big meal and that is all I need to eat. But you don't necessarily want to try to force yourself into doing this, but let it happen. You start stabilizing your blood sugar by lowering your carb then you start eating more whole foods and then you go into skipping breakfast, make yourself a drink with some fats and bulletproof coffee and then you'll find that your body adapts. It gets easier and easier. If you want to eat twice a day, eat twice a day. If you want to eat three times a day, do that but stay away from the processed foods and over time you'll probably want to eat less and less often. So once you start skipping that uh, that breakfast and even though you're getting some calories with the coffee, the bulletproof coffee, you're getting some, some energy from that fat that has virtually zero blood sugar impact. It has no insulin impact. So it's like you're still fasting because you're not upsetting your blood sugar. Your body doesn't really change anything. And then you, let's say that you skip breakfast and you have lunch at 12 o'clock, then however late you have your dinner, let's say 6 o'clock. Now you had two meals in that day, that's a six hour feeding window, means you're fasting for 18 hours. So if you can get to that point, then you're already doing pretty well with intermittent fasting. Some people, they take it a little further and they start pushing the lunch later or the dinner earlier and then eventually just go to to one meal, but do it when it when your body feels that it's right. So start these changes gradually and then just listen to your body. But your body won't tell you the truth if you keep doing these things. If you keep eating processed foods, if you keep eating uh, junk, if you keep eating small meals and lots and lots of carbs and sugar, now your body is never going to tell you the right thing. It's never going to give you the right messages because you're tricking it with chemicals. You're tricking it with things that upset your hormone balance. You're, you're making it unable to give you the right, the right clues. So remember that there is no fast way to health. Sure you can lose some weight quickly but that's not health. And if you want to get healthy, then you have to get your cells and your organs healthy. You have to provide them some nutrients and you have to stop putting toxins in. You got to take some bad out, put some good in and stay with nature. That is the key. Whenever humans have tried to change things or alter things, uh, I have yet to find an example where there is a man-made food or chemical that is good for us. Uh, Leave me a comment, let me know if you have found a man-made chemical that is healthy, but I, I, I have not seen any evidence of that. I've never seen anything come across my path. So I would strongly recommend intermittent fasting, but don't do it as a way of losing weight. Yes, it will do that, but just learn how to get healthy. And the way to get healthy is to eat whole food, take a whole food supplement, take some fish oil, do things naturally and then you fit that into the idea of intermittent fasting. So 
Keep all of this in mind and if you enjoy this sort of content, make sure that you share it with as many people as possible because this is real clinical knowledge based on results and physiology. This is what people need. Everyone that you know needs this stuff. So let them know about this. Don't be shy. So let me know if this has worked for you and what your experiences are and if you have any questions on whether what you have done is a healthy way of doing it or not. As always, thanks for listening.